Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over timestamps and timestamp filters. So a few things to note starting out. First, Xano stores timestamps as a Unix timestamp in milliseconds, meaning the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970 uh, UTC. However, you might notice in the database table or that spreadsheet view, um, you'll see that the timestamp is actually transformed uh, to match the time zone of your viewer's browser. So me in California will see a different uh, view of that timestamp than someone say in New York. Additionally, uh, Xano accepts uh, inputted timestamps in different formats, one being just a raw timestamp, um, a raw Unix timestamp in milliseconds, also uh, ISO 8601 format, Postgre database format, and relative time format according to php.net. Uh, you can find all of that information in our documentation, so don't worry, you don't have to know that off the top of your head. Okay, let's get into the filters though. I created this custom function here just called timestamps. I can go into my function stack, and if I go into data manipulation, um, I can create a variable here. And let's say in the text here, I wanna say maybe last Monday. And I know I can say that because in this php.net chart that you can find a link to in our documentation, um, this just shows us the relative time formats that we can use. So if I go to add filter and I choose a filter, we see in the timestamp option, we have these four different filters. But if I go to conversion, there's one more. That's to timestamp. This allows me to uh, convert text to a timestamp. So in the time zone here, maybe I wanna say America, Los Angeles. And there's a list of all the time zones we can use in Wikipedia, and we have a link to this in our documentation, but that's all the different formats that you can use. Anyways, so I can go ahead and hit update and save. And now when I run this, we'll just get this long Unix timestamp in milliseconds. So one important thing to note, if I'm using a time like last Monday, um, this time zone is actually very relevant and important because last Monday for me here in California, uh, is gonna be a different Unix timestamp than say last Monday for someone else elsewhere in the world. However, if I were to do something like now, well, this time zone actually becomes irrelevant because now is the same Unix timestamp for me as everyone else in the world. Okay, so now let's show another filter here. So I have now here and I'm gonna go add a filter and now I'm gonna go to this timestamp time stamp option. So let's go ahead and do format timestamp. And there's another PHP chart that you can of course find a link to our documentation that has these date time uh, format characters over here. And I'm going to go ahead and use this lowercase r because it gives me uh, this nice little human readable view right here. So if I go back over here and I say format r, and I'm gonna do this in America Los Angeles time zone, I'll hit update, save, and now when I run this, we'll get a nice human readable format out that says Tuesday, 10th of November, 2020, 437, and we even have that offset right there. Okay, now let's go back into here, and I'm gonna go into add a filter again, and I'm gonna do this transform timestamp. So this allows you to um, apply some type of transformation to a timestamp anchored to some kind of previous time. So. If I go ahead and transform this timestamp, and let's say, I'm gonna say, let's add seven days. And the time zone, I'm gonna use, keep using America Los Angeles, and I'll hit update. Instead of now, I'll say, it's gonna be last Monday. But if I go ahead and run this, I'm just gonna get that Unix timestamp. So for this video, I'm also going to go ahead and format the timestamp. And I'm gonna use that R format again. We'll do America Los Angeles. I'm gonna hit update, and I'll hit save. And now when I run this, we'll see that seven days from last Monday in America, Los Angeles time is uh, Monday, the 16th of November, and it's just gonna be at uh, basically 000. And then we see that offset allowing us to know that that's in America, Los Angeles time. Okay, just a couple more filters that um, are notable here in the timestamp. So we have this add milliseconds to timestamp and also add seconds to timestamp. These are pretty straightforward. I'll show you what the add seconds to timestamp. This is just gonna add seconds 
um, or milliseconds, depending on what you choose, to that Unix timestamp. So we just give it an integer here. So if I go ahead and say, I'm gonna add just 600 seconds to this last Monday timestamp, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And when I run this, we'll just see these long Unix timestamp um, in milliseconds, but now it has that added 600 seconds than before. Um, so that's really it for the timestamp filters and information on timestamps. Uh, we just updated our documentation to give you all the information you need to be able to play around and manipulate with uh, these timestamps. So definitely go check that out. Hope this video helps and I'll see you in the next video.